So this conference papers is very much a result of um, our many talks, informal talks. Uh, while we were, we've been working on, on some recent project about Pope Francis and his authority uh, with Jan Swonka, Jan is present here. Uh, he is a patrologist and theologian, I would say thrown into the world of media and communication and theology. Uh, and of course, the pro project, uh, it's more, more or less a collaboration between social sciences and uh, theology. But what we present here, what we're presenting here, is a glimpse of our um, uh, foundation, where is the place of, uh, of theology, digital theology, and wh what's, what's the basic field to put the digitalization inquiry. Um, this project was founded by the National Science Center Poland, and it's called Papal Authority Transformed by Changes in Communication. And uh, it covers different types of materials and methods using some ideas from the first fa phase of the project. I will explain here what's the digitalization inquiry, the theological dilemma, and uh, just uh, sticking to the to, to the first question or the idea that was put in the beginning of the conference, just before the prayer. Um, I remember that hosts, Jonas, Kyle, and also uh, Pete, uh, they suggested that there are ambitious maps, or there is an ambitious map of digital theology research in the context of the digital humanity studies and digital humanity practice. However, we tackle the problem of theological identity. Uh, we see it as only as uh, uh, partially uh, tackle. And we are looking at this identity from two different perspectives, let's say approaches. Um, the first assumes that there is no such a thing like digital theology, which is quite basic for everyone. And the other one, uh, more or less, refine or open uh, that uh, digital theology brings some novelty to our understanding of theological reflection and uh, it has its own identity which differs from other types of theology and our aim is to present these two arguments to contrast them and to pose a question about the possibility of dialogue because we see both as quite contradicted and working on different levels. Uh, so first approach, this one is based on the basics that theology ref refers to understanding of man. Uh, and after Karl Rahner, we assume that theology means specifically some kind of anthropology. Uh, theology draws from references to person and message of Jesus Christ that we know about from the Bible. And we argue that digital world does not change either our understanding of man or humanity. That's the first approach. And here you go, um, a reflection of my colleagues, Jan, who's present here. <laughs> uh, his daily practice reflection of more than 35 years of being a, um, theologian at the university in Poland, firstly in Italy, then in Poland, now, now in Poland. Uh, just quoting some parts of this huge reflection, now I like to use the available data sets of theological texts and digital text analysis tools. And then other, another part of the quote, I appreciate it immersely, yet it did not change the context of my thinking in any way. Nor can I remember if it ever helped me understand a theological text. So here we go, a glimpse of the first approach. And this element of lack of change described by Jan, uh, Jan's reflection, uh, it suggests that the breakthrough in the transfer of information processing brought about the digital world remains uh, beyond humanity. Uh, drawing on thoughts of Levinas, 
we see a strong anthropological argument that the digital universe remains blind to what is specifically human. As we can see on the screen, uh, there is a quote, a huge quote from Levinas' uh, work, where he pinpoints that contemporary thought moves in a world of being without human traces. Subjectivity has lost its, lost its place in the midst of a spiritual landscape comparable to the one before the astronauts who first set foot on the moon. Um, that's, that's, the first, that's the first approach, part of the first argument. And now the second approach, uh, we follow Karl Barthes that theology is dialectic uh, in whose fields we ask question about the relationship between man and God. And this relationship, of course, occurs in secret. Contrary to many types of theology, revelation is not an object that is directly filled by human sense. Uh, he sees re revelation as a subject that take place, takes place in secret. And... Uh, it takes place from an existential experience. Uh, the second approach shows that existential experience is the fundament of a starting point of thinking about the digital theology dilemma. The transformation outline in this reflection has no mm, counterparts in the past. And uh, you will see now a part of my reflection as part of our reflection that we, we had a conversation about digital theology and roots of our collaboration, mm -hmm. uh, both from, from the position of uh, methodology and, of course, from the existential terrains and questions about the nature of humanity and where, where are sources of some options about questions on on humanity, on man, and, and, and science, and, and, and so, uh, social world. And here we go, my, my, my thought um, and my experience, my reflection about conducting research uh, within uh, media studies with theological background and, of course, social sciences. Uh, it's more than 10 years. And uh, as I wrote down this testimony, I think that one, one thing is quite problematic. A reality was quantified, and it was accompanied by external phenomena and internal life problems that we had not experienced before. Here is the space for the other approach of digital theology, the second one. Uh, there is a part of a transformation uh, and this transformation has no counterparts in, uh, in, in the past world uh, because the digital world, world is uh, associated with the real world in a form of some kind of a hybrid. Uh, without defining what's hybrid, people from media studies, they know that hybrid media are both in real media and in, in digital or uh, social media and digital world. Um, here, the hybrid evokes that there is a different type of experience. And this type of experience is different from the one before we, uh, the, the change, the social change, the transformation of technology. And uh, rethinking digital, digital space, uh, or as I said here on the slide, reconfiguring the digital space, uh, we can see that as some kind of a human experience. Uh, and this kind of experience determines the form of theological practice and also the theological thought. However, within this approach, digital theology is not just a theological practice in the context of digital world. So just following the thoughts that Jonas mentioned in one of his, in, in, in the mentioned article in, in Open Theology. Uh, to explain the difference, let us uh, refer paradoxically to Heidegger's thought uh, and his uh, thoughts on technology. We know that he's counter-technological. Uh, although 
there is one quote in all of his the corpus of his works that shows that in within technology technology there's there is a part of of the true being uh, what has the essence of technology to do with revealing i'm quoting um the answer everything technology is a way of revealing end of the quote so following heidegger's we see that the digital world is not just a hidden area but is an experience is is a place where we can experience something unavailable elsewhere uh, digital world is becoming a thing that in many types of theological uh, thoughts is called locus theologicus so that's that's the the source place for theology since the essence of theology comes down to describing what is experiential in the context of the dialogue concerning man and god uh, revelation is able to be hide or to to hide in a human being's life in the net and our embodiment uh, in technology becomes a new platform for existential reflections and just to conclude uh, we know that uh, state of investigation status questionis in in the old theological way of presenting the argument that should open the per in the paper uh, but it seems like a good summary of this in in this case the position of the theologian is based on anthropology uh, that radically separates men from the rest of creation and uh, this position recognizes a certain essence that the essence of humanity which is not influenced by the world of things and thoughts including the digital part of the world levinas used this perspective uh, only taking into account the conversation between people. And in this optics, things do not appeal to a person. There are only real relationships between real people. The second perspective found in Barth's idea, it's a broader conversation which blurs the stiff boundaries. It's a relationship with the world, including the digital world, where we can find some kind of conversation including uh, exposing god who speaks to the human heart of course it's not the the core understanding of theological movement when 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 we uh, when we use the the Bart, bart's com context to explain uh, the general theological boundaries or the the foundation of uh, the, uh, digital theology, although we see a link between Barthes and digital theology in, in this conversation, because uh, it can transfer the depths of person's identity. Okay, uh, so one minute left. Yeah, thank you. Uh, just to sum up or just to, <laughs> I nearly finished, uh, from the philosophical speaking, uh, philosophically speaking, uh, from the philosophical point of view, we find the same topic in Heidegger's. So there are two perspectives. There are unlikely to meet halfway. Uh, both build a serious dilemma and they can be important for each other. Uh, of course, they are not symmetrical and do not seem to have contact points. Uh, but in this case, the dialogue may mean listening seriously and attentively to the other sides and other arguments. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for Thanks. this presentation. Now we have got Florian Höhne as a respondent. Florian is a research and teaching fellow at the Faculty for Theology of the Humboldt University of Berlin and the Berlin Institute for Public Theology. His research areas include public theology, digital theology, media ethics, and ethics of responsibility. And he's also an ordained minister to the Lutheran Church of Bavaria and has worked as a journalist. So now, Florian, welcome. And oh, thank you. 
looking forward to hearing your response. Thank you for the very kind um, introduction and also for the invitation to respond to your paper, Professor Guzik and Professor Slomko. Let me first thank you for that very inspiring and thought-provoking paper. I enjoyed a lot reading it, so thanks a lot for that. It offers, to my understanding, a distinction of two typical attitudes towards digital theology that can be very helpful for an interdisciplinary discourse often loaded with misunderstanding. Since the two approaches lack contact points, as you, as you yourself said, I would even go further in my understanding. These are not only different approaches, it's more like different paradigms or different rationalities. And I understood these two rationalities the following way. For the first rationality, it is a self-evident presumption to think of media as instruments used by essentially unchanged humans and their theology. The second rationality, and I borrow the term from Albrecht Grötzinger here, understands media hermeneutically. New media make new experiences and understandings possible. The paper's concluding thesis then that I got is, these two rationalities can learn from each other, need each other, and should be in dialogue with each other. My, my thinking starts with the first ration, uh, rationality. In many discourses, Marshall McLuhan's, the medium is the message, has become common sense. That makes it all the more interesting to ask what a digital theology could learn from the first rationality. Do we need to talk more about substantial theological issues, the content of media communication? This question could be an important nudge of the first um, approach. If this nudge and if fostering dialogue are the main intentions of the paper, I have two constructive concerns, one about content and one about method. First, the one about content. If you want to show that digital theology can learn from the dialogue with this first approach, I would be, it would be helpful for me to get a clearer idea of what an instrumental understanding of media has to teach to digital theology. Coming from non-essentialistic liberationist and critical theologies, coming from media theories that highlight the practical interrelatedness of things, bodies, implicit and explicit knowledge, I would like to know what this first rationality has to contribute to the dialogue. Why is it not just an universalization of a certain contextual notion? And how does it deal with that um, uh, critique? Furthermore, I'd love to discuss more about how the dialogue between the two um, rationalities can be possible, because the two are not symmetrical, as you yourself said. Um, I think this is true even on a deeper level. It is not only true temporally, but also logically. The first rationality is commensurable to the second one, but the second one is less commensurable to the first. And that is an obstacle to di dialogue on the same level. The hermeneutic approach can comprehend and make sense of the instrumental understanding of media and, its and explain it in its own terms. But that, to my view, does not that easily work the other way around. Two brief examples for that, and then I will conclude. On the one hand, if it is reasonable in the first rationality to say about digital transformation, quote, yet it did not change the content of my thinking in any way, unquote, this conviction makes sense in the second rationality. Of course, a theologian can be of that conviction because the digital transformation works so fundamental and so subtle that the theologian who is always already deeply involved in it cannot see the changes. On the other hand, I don't see how the first rationality can capture this insight. Like in David Foster Wallace's famous story, quote, there are these two young fish swimming along and they happen to meet an older fish swimming the other way, who nods at the same at them and says, morning boys, how's the water? 
and the two young fish swim on for a bit and then eventually one of them looks over at the others and goes what the hell is water unquote apply to our topic what is digital what is digital change and how do we see it if it is as subtle as water is for fish the second example this is all the more poignant where it comes to the historic changes has the quote invention of printing which was primarily used to popularize access to the bible unquote changed how we read the bible a hermeneutical understanding of media will answer answer of course it has very much so without it the history of the evangelical movement and reformation were unthinkable and without the reformation the development of the modern roman catholic church would have looked different plus the more people read the bible the more interpretations there will be I don't see how this insight can be reasonable to the first rationality, and I'd like to hear more about that. That's a challenge for dialogue um, if this commensurability works differently for each um, approach. To sum up in one sentence, because I appreciate the paper's intention to foster dialogue, I'd love to discuss and hear more about what the digital theology could learn in this dialogue, particularly with the first rationality and how it could work concretely. Thank you very much. 